This is KGW News at 5. And first at five, we have breaking news. The FDA has just authorized Moderna's coronavirus vaccine for emergency use. A panel yesterday voted overwhelmingly to recommend approving the vaccine, which is shown to be just as effective as Pfizer's. It's a potential game changer because unlike Pfizer's vaccine, it does not need to be stored at ultra cold temperatures, making it easier to distribute in rural areas to provide support for our healthcare system and to also give our students an incredible opportunity of a lifetime. Nursing students at the University of Portland are getting ready to be part of history. They're joining Kaiser next month to help vaccinate people for COVID-19. KGW's Galen Atlin looks at challenges facing the system and how these reinforcements will help. Dr. Katie Scharf at Kaiser is excited about a COVID vaccine. This sense of hope in, you know, a very challenging time. But with high case numbers, helping the community and her team is a challenge. Staffing is tight. Uh, we need all of those healthcare workers to be taking care of the patients. But we need to figure out how to get this vaccine and get these immunizations done so people can get protected. It's really going to be an important turning point for all of us. Dr. Casey Schillam is the dean of University of Portland's School of Nursing. This video shows the school before COVID. In January, 30 to 40 nursing students will join Kaiser to administer COVID-19 vaccines. They are the future healthcare workforce, and they are already prepared to be able to deliver vaccines. Now, I think maybe some people at home hearing students are giving the vaccine that might be concerned. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what that looks like for someone who's maybe not in the medical field? We have a very rigorous uh, training program in terms of giving vaccine for anyone who's giving vaccine. And so I, I am confident they will be competent and safe to administer it and will have direct oversight. Ten faculty members from UP will volunteer on the front lines before students are brought in, helping give them the lay of the land. So they have the knowledge, they have the skill, and it really is almost like this untapped workforce that stands ready to be able to help with the dissemination. How big is the need for nurses right now? What we find is that in the Portland metropolitan area, we have more than enough nurses, but we don't have enough of nursing workforce distributed throughout the state. UP is working to bridge that gap with rural health departments and providers. But under the strain of COVID-19, it's just a critical shortage of healthcare workers nationwide. Dr. Scharf says students can jump right in to make a difference anywhere. But it's also an opportunity for them to get experience because, you know, they will be leading our healthcare workforce in the years to come. I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. At Kaiser's Westside Medical Center in Hillsborough, healthcare workers got the much anticipated COVID-19 vaccine. And among the first to receive a shot, Eric Cathy, the ICU nurse, later spoke with Oregon Governor Kate Brown on Zoom. Cathy said he wishes the public could see the devastating impact of this virus firsthand, but patient privacy laws and HIPAA prevent that. I wish HIPAA wasn't a thing right now, so we could just walk and just show people exactly what's going on in these units and just how wild and crazy and scary it is to see how sick people are. After a week of photo ops and excitement over the arrival of a COVID vaccine, health workers caution we're still facing a significant challenge. A surge in seriously ill COVID patients over the past few weeks is straining the health care system. In some regions of the state, including the Portland metro area, ICU bed occupancy rates are at 83%. And the ICU at one hospital, OHSU Hillsboro Medical Center, is completely full. Make no mistake about it. It's a medical miracle. Vice President Mike Pence received his COVID-19 vaccine this morning. The vice president and his wife, Karen, and Surgeon General Jerome Adams all got the shot at a public event today. The public display is meant to inspire confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Joe Biden says he's set to get vaccinated Monday and will also have it administered in public. Pe president Trump is still receiving the benefits of the antibody cocktail he got while recovering from COVID-19 in October. He says he will not not get the vaccine until the White House medical team recommends that he get it.
Oregon passed another milestone today in the pandemic. Since the first case of COVID-19 was detected in February, there have been more than 100,000 cases reported. More than a quarter of those, more than 25,000 cases, have been reported this month. This is the daily case curve. The two-week average, that dotted line that you see, appears to be leveling off, but it's almost at 1,500 per day. The state also reported another 21 deaths today. This graph shows deaths reported each day. You can see the big uptick over the past few weeks. We've now lost more than 1,300 Oregonians to the pandemic. You know, in all the years that I, I worked, uh, you know, in units that tried to reduce gun violence, there would always be spikes. Uh, this is an astronomical spike. As we near the end of 2020, gun violence in Portland seems to just be getting worse. As of today, Portland police say they've responded to 858 shooting reports this year. In 2020, Portland has seen the most homicides in 27 years. KGW's Pat Doris has one police sergeant's reaction to the ongoing violence. This shooting near Emanuel Hospital Thursday night left a woman dead, murdered in front of her husband, according to the district attorney. She became the 52nd homicide in Portland this year. It's the most in the city in 27 years, each more than just a number. This week alone, five people were killed, including a 16-year-old and a 44-year-old named Mike Arthur. He was working at the Cured Green Shop on North Lombard when he was robbed. His brother Lorne still trying to understand why he was killed. If they had asked Mike, he would have done everything he could to be able to help him. Like, he's not someone you need to take from if you need. He's, he has spent his whole life giving to the community. Gunfire in Portland is now common. In 2020, 52 homicides with 224 people shot and 858 separate shootings. It's shocking. It's not just, you know, in all the years that I, I worked, uh, you know, in units that tried to reduce gun violence, there would always be spikes. Uh, this is an astronomical spike. Sergeant Kenneth Dulio spent the last 19 years working with Portland specialty teams that targeted gun violence. The team was disbanded at the beginning of July. Activists accused it of unfairly targeting people of color, a charge that Police Chief Chuck Lavelle, a black man with deep ties to Portland, said was not accurate. Still, the team was defunded during the summer's racial protests. The cops in the unit scattered to other duties. DeLeo thinks it's a big reason why there are so many shootings now. So right now, I think, you know, some of these people that are involved in gun violence, they're kind of rolling around the city looking for their enemies, and there's really no consequences. They're not really, you know, afraid that the police are going to stop them, that they might get arrested, they might get caught with a gun, and so they just kind of got a free pass. Crime scenes in the past might hold bullet casings for 20 to 30 rounds, DeLeo said. Now it's common for police to find 50, 60, even more. Sometimes, you know, it is a shootout between two different groups, and there might be three or four shooters on one side and three or four shooters on the other side. And, you know, potentially just with the sheer number of shots fired, you know, somebody's likely to get hit. And unfortunately, sometimes that's innocent people too. Last weekend, a 23-year-old from Iraq driving for Uber stopped to pick up a ride in the Woodland neighborhood and got caught in the crossfire of at least 60 bullets. He later died at the hospital. Sergeant DeLeo said nearly all the gang-related shootings are connected, retaliation or payback for a past shooting. They're all connected. And some of these connections don't just go back like for a few weeks or a few months, but they go back years and years. The question of how to stop the shootings is not an easy one. While some, like Sergeant Dulio, want the specialty team put back together, it's currently disbanded, and the police bureau's budget has been cut by millions. The mayor has been all over the board on this. First, he supported disbanding that unit. Then he said maybe it should be brought back. And in the meantime, the shootings continue. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. And Pat did reach out to the mayor's office for a comment. They have not given one. And you heard him mentioned just a moment ago, a young man from Iraq who died yesterday after he was shot last weekend. His death has hit the community hard. Now they're coming together to support the victim's family and call for the end of the violence. Catherine Cook reports. 60 bullets. That's how many rounds police say were fired just after midnight Saturday in the Woodlawn neighborhood near Northeast Stafford and 11th Avenue. At least one of those bullets hit Dolphicar Masir. The 23-year-old just happened to be driving for Uber that night. 
an innocent bystander caught in the crossfire. On Thursday, Delphicar died from his injuries, surrounded by his family. His death affected everyone. Ali Al-Rubai works at Cedar Halal Market. He says Delphicar would come by at least once a week. It was devastating. Everyone knew the guy in the community. Uh, he was uh, he was very nice to everyone, and everyone's like very touched. The Oregonian reports Delphicar was a refugee from Iraq who moved to Portland with his family five years ago. He returned to Iraq in August to get married and was working to bring his new wife to the U.S. Many in his community are now raising money to help with Delphicar's funeral expenses, including Cedar Halal Market. Just to cover what the family needs. And everyone's been pitching in and everyone's been helping. Portland has been marred by gun violence this year. More than 800 shootings so far. That's more than double compared to last year. Portland used to be way safer than this. This week, Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle spoke against the violence. Violence is also a disease that kills and our community is suffering the consequences. The disparate impacts of violence on our communities of color are shocking. Ali hates that one of his favorite customers is now a statistic in a place he came to for refuge. I'm hoping they catch whoever did it. I'm hoping like uh, the city becomes more secure again. Crime Stoppers is offering up to a $2,500 reward for information leading to an arrest in this case. You can share tips online. We'll post the link on KGW.com. And remember, you can remain anonymous. Catherine Cook, KGW News.